Without this, you live in an assumption world. You think everything's okay, but you don't quite know. But with this, you're aware of the other person's feelings, thoughts, and what they're thinking about. So what am I talking about here, guys? I'm talking about communication. Communication, simple, but very complicated. Why is communication important in a relationship? Relationship with your friends, relationship with your parents, relationship with your children, relationship with everyone around you. If you don't have the communication with these people, you are always going to be in the dark. You're not quite sure what the other person is thinking because you're not asking their question. You may have hang-ups about speaking to a particular person in the family. Or you find it hard because you have the worries about, I don't want to upset them, I'm not sure how to ask this question. And in fact, communication is actually a tool that you actually need to know how to ask that question without worrying about which style you need to ask it in. So today, I want to talk about communication and its importance in our lives. If you can master the communication in your life, in your family, and everyone's open to talking and they're respectfully being heard and listened, then you really have got something very, very special because the art of communication is something that's not simply found in everywhere. We just don't like to talk. We have massive issues in our heads where we've assumed that we mustn't say this to the person because they will get upset. And if we don't like what the other person said, we take it home, don't we? We don't actually deal with it. I'm not saying this is everyone, by the way, but majority of the people would not. In, in fact, I wouldn't. I will take it home. I know that if I have had the chat with that particular person, I feel so much better because we don't empty this out. Then the other person's assuming that you're all right you haven't said anything so if you've had a meeting but in that meeting you weren't able to put your points across and you wanted to speak up it's all here and you know it doesn't feel right because you haven't said that you haven't actually had the opportunity to say those words but you've kept it in and you've gone home the minute you've opened the front door you've headed for the bottle of wine because you're so consumed with frustration from that meeting that you've gone home and at home you're comfortable so you're just going to blurt that out maybe to your kids you may wait for your other half, share with him or pick up the phone to your mum and maybe say those words in more of an anger and resented manner. This has been taking all the energies, all of our focuses today has been because we haven't been able to say the words, say a point, put a point across because something held us back. It may be that you didn't want to look stupid saying those points because you didn't believe in yourself. It could be that you didn't want to upset them or simply didn't have the confidence to say it. But you know here, you knew it's here and you, it felt right to say it. It really needed to come out. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the tools to talk and the tools to communicate is something that's learned with experience, obviously, but as well as when you're a child and you've been given the opportunity to talk, maybe around the dinner table, and you are talking about this, it's your constant dialogue with your kids. If you haven't had that constant dialogue, perhaps when you've grown up, you're more of a quiet person, you like to not take part in the conversation, but in your head, you're having a full-on dialogue. Uh, one of the examples I wanna give you is, I was one of those people that wouldn't say much and think the other person should know what they're doing. So it will come to something to do in the house and I will assume my partner just, just knows that he's got to do this. You know, I'm doing that, so surely you'll do that. And I assumed and I expected this to happen. You know why? Because as a child growing up, things were expected of me silently. I remember my uncle walking towards me with a tray full of empty, dirty dishes that he's just had his dinner. And his expectation was that I should take the tray off of him because as a child, showing sign of respect would be for me to take the tray off of him. That's the culture that I was brought up in. And I very clearly remember, this is 30 years back now, and I remember that sh I was like, should I take it off of him? Or he looks like he's on a mission. He was going really fast and he had this tray and he's like, you know, going really fast. Do you know what happened after that? You won't believe it. He's not a very nice guy. What he did was he took that tray, he actually smacked the tray into the wall on the side with all the dishes and dirty dishes hanging, literally just 
crashing against the wall and just making a huge mess. My heart just was beating really fast. I was so, so fearful of what had just happened and totally blamed myself for it. What happened there was he assumed that I should have taken this tray off of him as I was going towards him. And he mustn't be carrying the plates. He's, it's not his thing. He's not his job. Um, it's more of a, a, a woman's thing to do or as I was a, a young girl. I, on the other hand, thought, no, what's wrong with you taking your tray? And if you want me to take it, then you need to ask me, don't you? Anyway, this incident has uh, left a memory, but it's, it's helped me to learn the tool of communication. And the culture that I was brought up in, the communication, they talked a lot. There was a lot of chatting, but not the right type. They were not vulnerable. They did not speak up. They did not tell the truth. They said what the other person wants to hear. Yes, that's communication, but is that the right kind of communication? This topic was inspired by my uh, friend that I met yesterday, who unfortunately had some bad news in their family. And when you have bad news, kind of family pulls together. But this particular family was, they really suffered as a result of having bad communication between them. Hang-ups about the past, hang-ups about not liking each other and that can just go on and on for years and you know me listening to this conversation I felt really sad for this family I felt really sad that even really really bad news wasn't breaking those barriers down and it's no one's wrong or right it's just the opportunity to communicate wasn't there or isn't being made available someone needs to come forward and say right let's get this sorted because what is that showing to the rest of the family members especially the younger family members, they're taking this model, this blueprint, that they're learning in this particular family forward. Then now we're creating, and I talk about a lot of the generations things, because we don't realize what we are doing is a picture we're painting for our kids' future. Our kids are going to do what we are showing them, good or bad or different. So we continue to stay within us and we don't want to speak up because we have so many hang-ups, but we do want to say something because we don't want to be in this state, the state that we're in. The state that we're in is not peaceful. The state we're in is not very comfortable. The state that we're in is, is in fact making us a negative and resentful person. So then we look back and 20 years have passed and we're still not getting on with this particular person. What do you do then? It's when it's not dealt with, it's hanging in the air like a bad, bad smell. And it's always there in your mind. And it's always there that you should have said it. It's exactly the same, the relationship with your partner. If you want them to do something, it's to create a habit of actually asking. And if they turn around and say, I already know that, then just turn around and say, I'm just gently reminding you. And that's all, and then you'll build a relationship that way. But if you didn't say it and assume that will be done, well, you didn't say anything about that. And that's where you need to find your style of communication. Giving your children some time and sitting and talking to them. Sometimes about nothing, just listening. Or give them the opportunity and space to speak up. Don't have a judgmental comment about it. Well, you shouldn't have done that. It doesn't matter. It's actually letting them speak. How do you feel about that? Ask a question that you may get an answer where the child is not thinking you are judging them. Because if they're constantly in fear of, I must tell her the right thing or she's either gonna go at me, you will have communication that's not an honest one. And that the actual thing they really want to tell you is in their heart still. And you've said goodnight and you've gone off, but we haven't dealt with it. We haven't opened the doors of communication from our heart. And that only comes from building that trust. But once you trust the other person, you will open up and be really honest about your feeling. But the minute you've been judged, really, you are not going to tell them anything. Very important with the kids, especially teenage kids, because they want you to hear what you want to hear. And as I was growing up, I did that with my mum. My I told her what she wanted to hear. I was not honest. I lied to her and just said what I thought I had to say. And what that, that does is that builds that habit of you then becoming that person who doesn't tell anyone anything. And then when you grow up and you're an adult, you're like, what well, I need to do, I don't need to tell that. Uh, it's fine, I can, ha I can handle this, I can handle this. Really? 
Can you really handle it? Because if you have respect for yourself, if you have created self-love, you will speak up. There's a difference than the, those, those communication habits. The tools that we're talking about are so crucial for you, for you to be in a good mental state, for you to be in a good place, and for you to be a better mother. And busy moms, what can you do? If you were to invest in some time in talking and listening and not rushing, then you will see life is beautiful. But because we are all rushing, getting from one place to the other, but we're forgetting very, very important thing, which is communication. Some, my, one of my friends is, um, has created a very good platform. So every night they have dinner together. They've created their lifestyle like that. And you may be thinking, well, that's, that's great for her, but I can't do that. Remember, you can't say that ever that you can't do that we make choices if you think communication is important in your family you will create the platform you will create the opportunity to have those communications because you can see how it affects your whole life how it affects your whole family how your children are growing up confidently securely because they feel they can speak up and you know what that skill they'll take into school university also into adult marriage life and also when they have children of their own they'll be very clear at their speaking something that i am learning now because it isn't it wasn't something that i didn't learn as, as a child you know I, I spoke but many things are held in you know why because i wasn't listened i wasn't heard when i was small it's very important and it's really 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 crucial for us to communicate with everyone in an open and honest manner and don't worry about the consequences. If someone doesn't want to speak to you after you've been honest with them, they're not meant to be with you. They're not your friend. I want you to take away this message, guys. In fact, I want you to write this down. Communication to a relationship is like oxygen to life. Without it, it dies. Thank you very much for listening. Catch you next week, guys. Music